Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue our series on AC theory. In a previous video, we've looked at the different types of opposition to current flow that exist in AC circuits. And what we're going to do now is start breaking those down a little bit and looking at the mathematical formulas that define them. But in order to find out what they are, we're going to carry out an experiment to figure out what contributes to inductive reactants. Now, hopefully, you've already got your worksheet downloaded for you to be able to continue filling in. And we're now working on this row here. So here we're looking at the opposition calculation. Our first type of load was resistance. And of course, we know from previous videos on Joe Robinson training, the things that contribute to the resistance of a conductor. So we can go back and watch that video and fill in this box, but I'll put the formula in now. It hopefully will be familiar to you. R equals rho times L over A. Those are the factors that contribute to the resistance of a conductor. But what we're going to look at in this video is what contributes to the reactance of an inductor, or in other words, inductive reactance. Now let's remember that inductive reactance is simply another form of opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. It's trying to stop the current from flowing. So we've got a circuit all set up and ready to go. First of all, we're just going to illustrate a point about how we're going to measure uh, what's happening inside our circuit with the opposition to current flow, and then we'll get stuck into figuring out what contributes to inductive reactants. Let's have a look. So we've got an experiment set up here, and this is uh, slightly more complicated than our usual experiments, but it's not quite as complicated as it first looks. So we've got, first of all, an AC supply connected up to this circuit. Now what's special about this AC supply is I can change the frequency of it. So if we look on our oscilloscope over here, you can see we've got an AC waveform being put into the circuit. And on this device, which is a function generator, I can actually change the frequency of the waveform. So you can see there that I'm increasing the frequency and you can see that we're getting more and more waves happening within the same period of time. So I'll put that back so it's just about at 50 hertz again, because that's a value that we're all very familiar with here in the UK, with our 50 hertz AC supply. Now we've said in this video that we're going to look at inductive reactants, and you'll notice that on our board here, we don't have an inductor connected up anywhere at all. What we do have is a variable resistor. And what we're going to do with this variable resistor is we're going to use this just to illustrate a point because we want to investigate what's happening with the opposition to current flow in a circuit that is live. Now there's one or two challenges with that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to measure the current flowing through the circuit and we're going to use that value of current and how it changes to infer how the opposition to current flow is behaving. Let me illustrate. If I switch my Mega AVO835 to measure milliamps, you can see we're currently measuring 9.78 milliamps. Now, if I start to change the resistance or the opposition to current flow of this circuit, you can see that the current is increasing. So the more I twist this dial here, the more the current goes up. Now, if we think back to Ohm's law, if current is increasing, then that means that resistance or opposition to current flow must be decreasing. So let's just bear that in mind. If the current goes up, the opposition to current flow must be going down. Now, just to prove a point here, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the frequency that's being applied to the circuit. So I'm going to change the frequency and watch what happens to the current as I change frequency. So I am changing the frequency. The frequency is increasing. Now you can see there's some tiny, tiny little movement of the current, but bearing in mind that we're talking here about 0 0.01 of a milliamp, so a tiny, tiny little fraction of an amp. As I change the frequency, you can see it's not really impacting on the uh, current flowing through there. So that indicates that changing the frequency on a purely resistive circuit isn't actually really changing uh, anything to do with the opposition to current flow. It's not increasing or decreasing the current flow. And we could change that enormously. We could now put this up to quite a large value. And you can see that we're still hovering around that 23 
uh, milliamp region. So the frequency has massively increased now. We're at somewhere around 1,100 hertz, and actually the current hasn't changed one bit. So we'll bring that back down to our normal steady 50 hertz. So we'll put that down to 50 hertz now, and we can see that changing the frequency doesn't really impact on the current flow in a purely resistive circuit. Now let's think about what happens inside an inductive circuit. So now let's set up our inductive circuit and to do this, although there's absolutely minimal risk of receiving any kind of shock from this, I'm just going to make the circuit go dead. So I'm going to strip out all the resistance from the circuit and I'm going to leave this as close to being a purely inductive circuit as I possibly can. So we've got an inductor connected in there and I'm just going to connect a link into there and we've got our circuit set up. So you can see here we've got the symbol for an inductive load. This is a 47 millihenry inductor. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to see what factors will affect the opposition to current flow in this inductive circuit now. So let's power the circuit back up now. So I'll switch the circuit back on again. Okay, and there's our AC supply reconnected. And now we've got the current flowing through our 47 Milli Henry inductor. So you can see here that we're sitting at uh, about 20 milliamps. Now what we're going to do now is start adjusting the frequency into the circuit, see how it affects the current flow, and from that we can infer how it's affecting the opposition to current flow within the circuit. So let's start turning the frequency up. So you can see on our oscilloscope the frequency is increasing. Okay, so we've seen perhaps a little bit of a change there, but let's go for quite a big change now. We'll change this up, so we're now at uh, 110 hertz. Let's times that by 10. So now we're at 1,100 hertz. And look at that, you can see now quite a significant change in the current flow. We're now looking at just around 10 milliamps. So let's just think it through. We increased the frequency and as we increased the frequency, we saw that the current dropped. And from Ohm's law, we know that if current is decreasing, opposition to current flow must be increasing. So now let's kind of cut out that middle connecting part and just think if we increase frequency, we increase the opposition to current flow. So in an inductive circuit, if we increase the frequency, we make it harder for the current to flow around the circuit therefore the opposition to current flow must be increasing. And in an inductive circuit, we call that opposition to current flow inductive reactance. So just to prove the point and just to emphasize this because it's really important, what do you think will happen if I increase the frequency to this circuit one more time? What's gonna to happen to the current flow and what will happen to the opposition to current flow? Well, let's have a look and find out. So let's change this now to a really high value and you can see on the screen here the frequency's got so high now that the uh, oscilloscope on its current settings can't actually measure the waveform. I could just adjust that just by changing the time division so you can see there the waveform comes into view but we've kind of um, decreased the value that each one of these little squares has just as a, as a minor point there. But the key point, the thing we're really interested in, what's happened to our current flow? well, we can see that it's dropped down again, and it's dropped down quite significantly now. We're down to 1.3 milliamps. So once again, an increase in frequency has led to a reduction in current. And if current is reducing, the opposition to current flow must be increasing. So we can see that clear relationship in an inductive circuit. If we increase frequency, we increase the opposition to current flow. In the next video in this series, we're going to have a look at how changing the inductance of the coil will also affect the opposition to current flow or inductive reactance. Thank you very much for watching.